Dave here. How are you? I thought I'd start the show with actually doing something. I lose a lot of people. They start at the show, they, get, well, they come in, they see the beginning, I'm talking, they disappear for you know half an hour, and possibly some of them come back. Today we're going to do a live build, and that was actually the start of it. I'm going to create another one of these. I don't know if you can see it from there, but at the back here, there is a support for the track. If I'm using the saw, which I'm doing here, and you'll notice that my lead flops around, the dust hose will flop around all over the place. This is a guide to support the saw when it's just sitting there. If I've got a narrow piece of timber in here, this tends to drop down. The new guide has a much better containment area to hold the hose and the lead. And it's something if you've used a perforated top, doesn't have to be my bench, could be anyone's bench, perforated top, the MFT3 or your own that you've made, this kind of thing, if you're in conjunction with using dogs, this is very, very handy. Okay, so today on the show, I hope everyone's well and you've had a good week and uh, you're looking forward to a little bit more and uh, of hanging out in my shed with me. <laughs> Let me see, I'm going to do a quick read down the side here. Uh, greetings, Dave. I guess you know, saying greetings that uh, the, the stream is running well. I'm down this end again of the workshop, down beside Arthur and all the gear here. And over here, I've got you can't see it, but believe me, <laughs> I've got the Bob and Santa drill press, and we're going to do stuff with the Torquetta box joint blade, six millimeter, this guy here, and using it for rebating and also for uh, creating dados in this one project and also the router table as well. The big thing this week is Jessam, uh, which have got a funny brand name, J E W -S, S and a capital E, then ordinary M, uh, are supplying clear cut stock guides as a giveaway internationally as well. The winners also from the uh, We Us and Co uh, embellishment cases, I have Four winners. Now remember, one will be Army for the Rising Sun emblem on the top, and the other three are the other services, but can also be used for Army and could be also used for anything. It's just that one with the embellishment, uh, sorry, the one with the Rising Sun is particular. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different to what I normally do. I'm going to announce the winner. I'm going to announce four winners. I'm going to announce the first winner straight away. And it's not, I'm going to save the one with the rising sun till the last. Okay. Let me see what I've got here. I'm hoping I've still got cable connected. I heard something just drop on the floor up there. So you let me know if I'm still here. Um, you haven't missed anything, Chris. All right. So let me see. I'm going to work in reverse as Rafflecopter selected them. Now, the majority of the people that entered were Australian Army. And I found that surprising. So there you go. The, the, the fourth person selected by Rafflecopter is Greg Sands. Now, Greg is also Army. So Greg, you will be getting one of the standard embellishment cases from We Us and Co. And I'll get that sent out to you as quickly as Peter can do that for me. All right, so there you go. So congratulations. And I think I've got a little uh, congrats thing here. Yep, there we go. That's, that's for Greg Sands. All right. All good. Thanks, John. And back to this camera here again. I think that's funny. <laughs> do a little bit of stuff. All right, let's keep moving on. Well, hold on, let's finish reading through here. We're going to build the guide. We're going to use the domino in the construction of this because I needed a slotted hole. And I could have done it with an eight millimeter drill and a jigsaw or the scroll saw. But I thought, you know, I've got the domino. It can be used for other things rather than just creating mortises for tenons. It's, it, it creates slotted holes. That's what it does. So I thought we'd use that with an eight millimeter um, router cutter for the domino in it. Um, the stock guides I will be using on the table saw. Now I built a jig for mine years ago and I did a video on it and I'll drag that up and we'll use that to hold 
the, um, the, the plywood down so that my fingers aren't anywhere near it. And uh, the giveaway, I've told you that, the We Us and Co's, support the channel through Patreon and the Amazon links below. I did put a post at the beginning of the, um, where it says comments, uh, just to, to advise you on how to do that if you want to. There we go. All good, all good, all good, all good. Now I'm gonna do another cut on this first, so I'm gonna drop this down here. And let's get stuck into it. These plans for this, for this track support, I've added to the latest Mark II Stanton bench plans. So if you get the plans, uh, I've thrown these in as well. There's originally, there was this one here. I'm not gonna do it retrospectively. This is, uh, that's how it was. There's too many, I can't go back through it and do it all for the new plan. But if you watch here, you'll see how easy it is. Now I need to dock this off at 110 millimeters. So to do that, I just lift this up to about there and let it go. And it sits there on its own. So I can now move my plywood out of there, measure the distance that I want, now I have to measure 110 plus two millimeters because the kerf on the blade is 2.2. So two millimeters is gonna be close enough for me. So it's 112. There. And you'll see how easy it all is. Pop that down there for the moment. Slide it back. And the good thing about the dogs and people have been wanting to know, what are dogs? You know, what do you, how, how do you use these bench dogs? Well, you can see I'm sliding this piece of plywood along. It's supported there and here and also under there, which gives it absolutely fantastic support right the way up to the cutting edge. Dropping it back down again. And I can line that up and that was pretty good. Now I'm using a SIS-1 off to the right hand side here. I'll swing that camera around just a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing there. So I have a SIS-1 here. Now it will catch my piece that I'm cutting so it doesn't tear off. This way I'm not running the track saw across the top of the bench. I'm always cutting off the outside. And in this method, I set the saw to its full depth of cut. So as the blade is coming up, it's, cut, it's, it's not tearing the fibers. It's a nice clean cut as it's coming up through. The splinter guard on the blade, oh, sorry, the splinter guard on the guide rail is stopping the fibers tearing up on the top. So it's just one of those things that can help you out. See, now I can just sit that up there. It's not going anywhere. I love it. It's so easy. Uh, plug the hose back in again. And that's the great thing about these systems, whether it's Festool or, pardon me, whether it's Festool or whether it's another company that has the dust collection ports. These are all hooked up through to the dust extractor there, which is the uh, CT26. And we'll dock it off. I don't really need to wear these, but in this situation, but I will because I try and look out for people who are um, who are just starting out in the game or playing around with this. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that will demonstrate stuff and throw caution, to throw safety out the door. And I get concerned. Like for me, I can watch what's happening. I say, yeah, all right, well, I, this is how I'll do it. I'll follow along what you're doing, but I'm going to use a riving knife or I'll do this and do the other. Uh, where if it's someone brand new coming in and starting, I, I get a little bit annoyed watching people being a bit slack. But anyway, there you go. You can see at the back here, I will switch that camera around. You can see what's happening from the back. Drop this down. Tip that like so. Switch cameras. Okay, that's gonna be a whole lot easier to see what's happening. This is the support. This is the SIS-1, which is one millimeter lower than the top of the Stanton bench. That's just the way that we've made the legs. When I cut this, it's just gonna sit there. Ready? And this is the, uh, the old style of hose guide.
There you go. And that is an extremely neat cut, top and bottom. All right. Drop this down onto here. And I've got to cut this. Got to cut this one this way now. And I'll do that here as well. So just lift this up, raise it up a little bit, and it will lock itself on and hold itself clear. I can drag this one out. And I'm going to dock this. I'm going to bring this down to here. So I've got plenty of support there. Now I can drop that. And along a little. I'm going to take ever so slight amount off it because I haven't got much to play with here. There we go. And again. Okay, so the reason I did that was I now have a perfectly square end. These two sides are dead parallel. That end is perfectly square to both sides. I love it. Now I'm going to cut this to 155 plus two millimeters, which is 150, hold on, let me read that again. 155, so it'll be 157. So that's where I'm going to cut it off to, 157, dead square. Slide it in here. Okay. Beautiful. Right on it. Magic. Now the good thing is under here I have one of these small dogs is right here I have the Festor cushion strip all the way on the Stanton bench here so this when I've got the weight on there that's almost impossible to move because it's also being held by the cushion strip on the underside of the guide rail this is very very safe okay here we go again Two millimeters I'm adding on there, Ron, because the kerf of the blade is 2.2 millimeters. So two millimeters for me is going to be close enough. Seeing I'm measuring from this side back this way, I am actually lining that two point of the, my mark up with the edge of the splinter guard here. So it's just one of those things. 155 to there plus two millimeters takes me to the other side of the saw blade, not to this side of the saw blade. Okay. Cool. What do we got here now? This end here is basically, I'm just going to dock this end off to make it square. This is uh, slightly less than what I wanted, but I think it'll be fine if I just take it off to being square. Just a little bit more. There we go. I'm really dealing with fine tolerances there. I'll switch the cameras back again. Take that off. There we go. So I have, look at the quality of cut hole, wrong camera. The quality of cut is just beautiful. Okay, so they're my, they're my two pieces and they're going to go together 
like so. Now I'm going to cut a length of half inch pine, or sorry, ply, that's going to sit on the top here and it's going to have the little cradle area. So let's get that out. Raise this up again so that it just sits there. How good is this? This is, I love it. Um, it's a whole lot more e economical than getting an MFT3 if you, if you want to get something like this. Now, this is a bit of uh, banana wood, <laughs> but I'm going to use it anyway. Now, this has to be, let me see, 116, I think. Let's see if I can dock it this way. I might just run it through here, trim the edge off to start. As I say, this, well, that was a fair way out. Hmm. Oh, that's because it was sitting up there. That's why. That's not too bad. All right, drop that down onto there. How are we going for time? Pretty good. Excellent. Uh, swing the camera around to this side again when my mouse decides to work. Transition. And throw these on. Come back. Now I'm going to cut down through the actual piece here. You see, I'm just slightly back. I should be all the way through. And see back here, this is why I'm making a new one of these. The hose jumps off. This area here is too shallow. Alrighty, now the width of this one is, where are we? 116 plus a couple of mil. Hundred and eighteen. Slide him around and keep coming out. Now I've just come past the second support. So I'm going to do a measure back there and there, but still all this, the uh, anti-slip is going to hold everything. 118. 118. That's because I've come past this dog here. All right. But I'm still pushing against the dog that's under the track. Let's rip that. is and that's the piece I cut it off a little bit of coffee all right how long is this one got to be first of all got to dock it to square And the length on this particular one is 176. Again, plus a couple, 178. Now this is only because these are such small pieces that I'm working to the other side. I could turn this around. Actually, I'll do it now. I'll show you how easy it is to switch it around. I'll go 170, um, 176 instead of 178, and I'll be working exactly to the splinter guard. So you can see here, 
This is my 176 mark, 178 mark. Now 176, I'm going to turn it around now after I've measured the distance from there to there. Turn it around, I'm going to put it back in and go to that 176 mark. Good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Just tapping it up and it'll get it. So my piece that I want is in here. Lights turned off because I'm down this end. Give me a second. Turn back on again. <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn the cameras around again. Okay, so we've done all the cutting. More coffee that I need to do. So very quickly, this like that, this like this, and this, sorry, and this is going to go on top like that. It's very simple. Hold on, let me have a quick look. Dave, are you using IMUFs? Do you know if they are available to ship to USA yet? Looking at purchasing a good set of eye protection. Yes, Papa Mo, these are IMUFs. And yes, you can get them in the States. Not a problem. Just go to IMUFs website. Um, just type in IMUFs and there you go. Um, okay, I think you just answered my question. Ron Thornton, okay, great. I am sitting in the corner of L shape. Can't you? <laughs> Does that count? All right. Um, guys, I hope, hope things are going, you know, interesting, a little bit interesting. If you weren't kind of aware of the prime function of the Stanton bench, this is it. This has been designed totally for cutting and very accurately, uh, especially when you work off the splinter guard. You know, I'm working to 0.2 of a millimeter on the other side, you know, so I'm a little bit out, but not, not by eons. And... The thing is, the whole thing being cut with either a, a Peter's uh, path guide system, I think that is, yep, uh, the UJK path guide system, or uh, mine, which I do with the CNC machine. They're probably a little bit more accurate. These are so easy to use. As I say, I can use this on the dining room table in the house. Um, just recently, when I was doing the draw slides, let's have a quick look at that. I put that on the web. I'm hoping this is going to actually show. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give it a shot. There we go. These are the draw slides I just uh, put in the kitchen up in the house because we couldn't find things. And there was, uh, there was stuff in there in that cupboard before I put the drawers in that had used by date of 2012 because the cupboards had just got so much junk in. You know when you put stuff in a cupboard, especially at the bottom, right to the back, no one's getting down on the floor to check, you know, drag everything out to see what was there. We avoided that cupboard and treated it like the plague. <laughs> anyway, um, keep on with this thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is drill a hole in this. And I'm going to do that over on the drill press. So maybe this camera here, I'll bring it around. And let me see if that's going to fit there. I need also to get in there. So give me a second. We'll switch the cameras to there. Tip it up a little bit. Now, what are the distances that I've got on this? They are 20 mil back and 77 across from the left. I'll drag this in a little bit. I have cables everywhere. All right climbing in between all the gear here. <laughs> Alright, I need to be 20 millimeters in. Let's go along to where we're going to be approximately 77 back as well. And 20.
Now, according to my sums, this is where the center of this uh, two and a half inch Forstner bit has got to go. Now, I've got a spoil board underneath it because I don't want to destroy my you know, drill press table. Now, I also had someone ask me the dimensions of this thing. So I'll tell them right now, if you're watching the show, it is 606 millimeters long by 300 millimeters deep. So it's basically two feet by one foot. And I think this is one inch MDF that's laminated and it's got all these T-tracks in it. And I like it. This one came with this clamp as well. And we will be utilizing that clamp now, when I put this in here, I need to try and get this so that all I'm doing is bringing the, the force in a bit down. Now, that's not going to be any good. Maybe going, maybe go this way, David. Yeah, that's going to be better. I need to undo the clamps on the fence, slide it back a little bit, and hopefully the fence is going to be effective for me. Mmm, this is not looking great. I'm going to lock it there because I really do want to use the fence so that... Ah, just got it. So that this doesn't go spinning, particularly seeing the hole is not being totally enclosed in the timber. It's coming out past the edge. So now I'm going to put the clamp on. Get that in as close as possible and lock it tight. Okay, so I feel a whole lot safer there. I've got the drill press set up around about 400 RPM because it's a large diameter cutter. The, um, the thing with these is the smaller the diameter, the faster the speed you turn at to get a result. I also have this hooked up to the dust extractor and once I move hoses around as I say, I'm working in an extremely cramped area here I have a hose port there although I don't know how it's going to work in this particular situation it might it might that might fly off um, I should really make some kind of a hose port about here but anyway look I'm going to throw my specs on because this one, if that goes flying, if I can look after my eyes, that's going to be great. Oh. <laughs> All right. There's the old eye muffs again. There's also their web website, I think, is called Reptilia. All right. All good. Turn it on. And down we go. It's going very slowly. There's no rush. That clamp is doing a truckload of work. On it. Nice clean cut. Coming up the end. Turn it back on. Start the dusty up. Beautiful. All right. Now we go to the next machine. I'll undo that. Clamping your stuff down is so important. That's what we have so far. Nice clean cut. Going to go to the bobbin sander next. So I'll bring this guy back to about here, raise the camera up, 
Periscope up. A quick read. You guys talking about uh, decimal and uh, imperial. You know, for me, it's easy, easy, easy to work in decimal, but I grew up with imperial until uh, they changed everything over halfway through my uh, technical college days. So I kind of, I'm pretty easy with both. Now this has got the dust extractor hooked up to the back. These machines are not ideal for dust extraction. There's a lot of open area under here. So don't worry about you know, these turn this way. So you must be aware of which way to approach any item. Now, because this is narrower at the moment than the actual bobbin, I'm going to fix that by just opening that side up and opening this side up until I'm in there. And I'm just going to create a little round on the pair of them. Here we go. Now all the way around on the inside and out the other side. And that's it. I don't really need to do any more. These are basically just to take sharps off. Now we're going to round all of that and we're going to put a rebate down here. Or as you guys in the States would call it a rabbit. Okay. Switching cameras back to the main one. Just joined today's show, unexpected visit from grandchildren caused delays. Good morning or good day, David. Uh, uh, I just placed my sand roll in my drill press. A cheap mat. Yes, you can do that. You can do that. Drill presses, though, are designed to act down. When you put lateral force on a drill press's quill, you are running the risk of wearing the bearings out. That's these things are designed to be what do what they do, an oscillating sander. Uh, morning, David. Rollins, didn't you guys get a lot of rain? Okay. I don't know about that. I'm still going. We're still kicking on. But look, I'm, I'm so glad that everyone's adding comment. I'm going to move this camera now around to here and get this part done. Okay, lower it down. You guys won't be watching for a second. Uh, there. And maybe I could have done it all with the other camera, but let's see what happens with this one. There to there. Uh, Dave, trying to figure out why your saw body does not hit those tall dogs when you plunge and cut. Mine does. Confused. Okay. The reason being, I set my saw to full plunge. Okay. This will. I'll, I'm just going to slow up for a little bit here. I'm going to switch the cameras back again. Okay. I have... Let's pop this under there so we can see it a little bit better. All good. At full plunge, bring that back ever so slightly. At full plunge, I'm through the cut. If I was there, I would hit. And on this side, the blade won't have finished the cut because it's up higher in the saw, which means it's, it's not as advanced as if it was full depth. Okay? Try that and see how it goes. All right, pop this back over here. And which piece am I working on? I'm working on this piece. And we'll switch the cameras again back to here. 
I'm hoping these answers, these answer a few of your questions. Right, um, back down to here. Now, while I'm down over here, I will not be able to hear, or sorry, I won't be able to read what you guys are talking about. This, I'm going to move that way just a little bit. All right, now I want to create a round over and I need my plan again. As I say, these plans are available on my site, stantonbench.com, or on my Etsy site. Uh, and uh, this, this one is free with the plan. We've just added this new one in. So John Lafferty has been fantastic and drawn all these up for me. Uh, now that one's on 77, 176. So this is the top, which means I want to create a round over here need to turn it up that way now down here I have my router cupboard and I've just moved a couple of things there so I'm going to raise the cutter up now this is a 3 8 round over <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to turn see turning the cutter I tend to touch the cutter with a piece of wood rather than stick my hand in there now this is very close, so what I do is I put the piece of timber and I rub it back with some forwards and with the fine adjust, I'll raise it up ever so slowly until I just start to nick it. There, I've, I'm nicking it now, I'm going to back it down a little bit and take it around to the other side. Same thing, that's where I want to be. And so now I will lock, I've got a spanner that I lock the router in position under there. I'm not going to turn the dust extraction on. I'm going to be terribly naughty. It's only a very small area that I'm doing. And what do I want here? I want one of these. Just a push block. I've got the gripper there as well, which does a fantastic job. I'm this way up, remember. And because I have grandchildren that visit me in here, this is a lock that goes into the switch. This is a manual disabler. If this is not in the switch on the outside of the cupboard here, well then I can't turn the router on. So there we go, it's in now. I'll move things away because the router cutter creates draft. So let's turn her on. There we go. We know it works. Okay, so 77, it's that size, so I'm going to go that way up. Look, let's get the gripper because they are, they are a very, very good product. The other good thing about the gripper is I can set it up like so, drop the sides down to there like that. And if I'm back out here somewhere, away from the, away from the cutter, well then I can't, I can't roll it off the side. I'm going to move the center in a little bit too, so I've got more grip over on there. So now when I go through, this is going to be clear of it touching that bearing at all. The reason I'm using a 3 8 if I was using, because I will still get a purchase of the bearing on the timber. If it was a half inch, the bearing would be up above and this would just go straight in and it'd be very, very dangerous to me, to whoever's doing it. So I'm going to hold on to this very, very tightly. And I'm going to actually approach like so. I'm not going to approach like so because what might happen is it might flick this and cause me a bit of grief. So I'm going to approach this way, let it run to the end, then I'm going to go back through and around the whole thing. Put the specs on. There you go. Safety first. Turn her on. Pushing down on it. Done. There we go. That's a little bit of sand and she's away. Now I've got to create a rebate across here for the track to actually drop into. So we're going to move over to there to do that. 
and I will switch cameras and then move that camera as well. How are we going for time? 22. We might do it, you know. It's going to be very, very close. There. Okay. Bearing looks too high from here. Just me. It worked. Um, they copped a very low cost. Da, da, a great tool. Uh, this is a good instruction. Thanks, David. You need improved YBS handles for the... <laughs> Gripper, of course I do. YBS being yellow box shed, not some strange kind of uh, high tech astronautical uh, NASA plastic. Well, you never know. I don't, I've no idea where it came from. Where am I up to? I've got to keep thinking straight, David. Okay, we're going. To, I'm going to set the other camera up over here. Give me a sec. Yeah, the. The bearing very, very close, but it did it. So you just have to be aware. There is that little bit of gap, that tiny, tiny bit of gap between the top of the cutter and the underside of the bearing. It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch. So I was probably holding on to that by around about one to one and a half millimeters, which was enough for me. Um, you know, it's one of those things, run with a, with a sample and do a test cut before before you expose yourself to any danger. All right, let's uh, switch the cameras back over to here and have some fun down there. All right, now what we've got is, you're not gonna see much of me in this, but that's okay. I have my Incra V27. This is great. I have a little bit of mini T-Track on the back that it's bolted onto onto a piece of Merbo, which I've machined up. I always set this with my mitre set. So I drop this into the mitre set chunk, and there should be links around for the mitre set as well, because I, I think they're fantastic. Now they say that on some of the um, Incras that the mitre set's not very good. Now on the V27, there's no issue whatsoever. And I like this because if this was slightly tapered and I drop it into mitre set, well then I'm referencing off the front, not off the back here. And I keep on telling people that. This is how I set it up. Drop it in, reference off the front. You wanna see it? Let's get one out. This is the um, mitre set that sets up different angles. So if you try and get a seven-sided regular uh, item or shape polygon, it's a pain in the bum. So you set this into there and you put this one into there. And next thing you know, I'm going to have this dropped into here. Like so. I'm going to release this. I know this wasn't in the show, but I thought, well, why not? Let's just show you while I'm there. Tighten it up. That's it. I am now set to make a seven-sided polygon. It's just brilliant. So it'll do, I was going to say one, two, three, but it, it'll do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and twenty sided polygons. It's, these, these are fantastic. This is the one that I really, 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 really like. Anyway, put that back. Um, the people that own might have set on the internet now are different to the people that got it all started and they tend to I don't know they, they, they tend to dissuade people from people that are, if you've got an INCRA which I thought was a little bit strange anyway down in here I have and I'll pull this out I have the Torquetta and just making sure that everything's turned off there this is my Torquetta box joint blade now this is a flat top blade, and I use this for small dados. This is a, if you've got a job site saw of some sort, and you don't want to put a very large dado stack in, you could get something like this, which is only six millimeters wide, and do increments of your dado or your rebate, and you'll be fine. This does a beautiful job. This is an eight inch blade, not a 10 inch, because all dado and, and box joint blades are eight inch. If they were too big, 
that'll be a massive flywheel spinning on this and it's just asking for trouble. This saw is a standard 10 inch table saw. You can get 12s of course and bigger, but this, the blades are always eight inch. You can also get six inch if you wish. Anyway, this absolutely magic. I'm gonna lower it down again. And because, one, one other quick thing about this. Because this is six millimeters wide, my riving knife has just become defunct. I don't need it because it's only 3.2 millimeters thick. So there is, this is, I would need a six millimeter riving knife to stop things curling in. But the thing is, it's a dado blade. It is not going to be cutting all the way through the piece of timber. So it's not gonna cut right the way through. It's only gonna cut a slot underneath. And so therefore, the timber is not going to close over because it hasn't been cut all the way through. So no need. I don't have the dust shield over the top because the blade will be encased by the timber anyway. So all the dust is going to go down there. Hence, there's no, nothing is going to be hooked in the back here. All right. I thought I'd just explain that in case someone says, hey, hold on, Dave, you're not doing it quite right there. And these inserts, I love them. So I just hit them with a bit of neutral wax and it keeps them looking nice and they work brilliantly. Now, what do I want to do here? I want to create a dado in this, but I'm going to create a dado in the other one first. I'm jumping around a little bit, but that's okay. Where's that, that and that. And this, I need a two millimeter deep dado in in, in this, I've got to forgot where I was. So I need a two millimeter dado in that for this to go into. Now this is 18 millimeters. I'm pretty sure where uh, is a ruler. I should really get the calipers out, but I'm not gonna be dealing with too much. Actually it's, yes, 18. So I need 18 millimeters and I need my plan, which is down there. Let me see, where are we? All right, I need to be 97 millimeters in from one end. So let's just say, all right, that end's gonna be it, 97. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this with my attachment that I made, because I told everyone that I was gonna show you my attachment and here it is. And these are what the Jessam clear cut stock guides. And that, that, and that is what you get when you purchase these. Now I'm gonna give a set of these away. So, and on my, I've got a magnet up here. This is a great little jig I made. Now you'll see I've got a bit of T-track in there. And for dados, I make something, oh no, I'll use that for the rebate. I'll use that for the rebate. I'm going to leave that off. I'm, as I said, I'll stumble through on this one. 97, I need to measure 97. It's the other piece that I need the stock guides for. 97 in. Is there. I can set the table saws fence to 97 millimeters as well. It's going to be 18 millimeters and less six. So let me see what we've got there. 18 less six is 12. So I need to move this 12 millimeters back from 97, is it? 97, 97 less 12 is five. 85 millimeters. Now, why am I doing that? Because the blade has thickness. Now I need two millimeters there. Bring her up and I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit dodgy and just guess two millimeters. That's going to do me. I'm going to lock it off there. And because I can use this, but because I'm not um, going all the way through, cutting this, this side is not going to be loose at all. It's all going to be like this. I want to move this across. That's the great thing about this sacrificial fence, wherever this is. And 
loosen the T-bolts. Got that one. I'll show you on the back there so you can see what's happening. So these are the T-bolts that lock it in position. I can now slide my sacrificial fence wherever I want. And to make it safe, I'm going to bring it across to about there. Now for those that don't know, the ends of a spanner are bent like that on purpose so you can get a grip on the nut that way. And then you might find this is going to get you almost a half purchase around the nut again or off the flat. Might sound a bit weird, but that's just, you know, one of those little things that I take for granted that I know, but I'm sure there's people out there that have got no idea about it. Now I can now, let me see, I might turn it around that way. Yep. I can now run that over the top of that blade and I will have the first part of my, my data. So I can hold it here quite, quite safely. Just don't have your fingers hanging down behind. So I can push down and hold it like that. Here we go, I'm gonna turn the dusty on as well. When I find the remote, there it is. And make sure I get the table saw open. I do. All right, turn it on. Turn it off. How neat is that? Have you seen anything as neat as that? Now I need to come across 18 millimeters. So Hence, the distance from here to here is going to be 12. You follow? So I've subtracted 97 from taken 12 off it because I'm going to come this way 12, which means I also need to turn the dust extractor off. Need to adjust this again. Come back just a little bit. About there. Got it. So that one is there, lined up with that. I'm going to bring it back to, what did I say, 85 millimeters. That should Give me 18 from there to there. Let's see how we go. Turn the dust on again. Turn this one on. There you go. Now all I need to do is take that out. Push this back. Up there. And I'm nearly there. Done. Turn it off. And we'll check the joint. Too bad. There we go. Turn that off. Now I need to create the rebate for here. Now this one is a little bit more mucking around, so I, I want that to help. I'm not going to use the miter gauge at all. Now I want this to be four millimeters or the thickness of the track. Now I can see there's comments there regarding uh, this is easier doing in different methods, but I'm trying to show you in ways that, you know, just it makes it so that anyone with a table saw can do this 
I'm winding this up so it's the same thickness as the track, just under. And yes, CNC will be easier, but I'm making a prototype. Bring this over to about there. Now this is my dado fence that I've made that will drop down about there. And the dominoes here are for this jig to slip onto. Like so. Now I can bring this over, which means I'm not going to go cutting into my fence at all, my rip fence. This is a sacrificial fence. Now I'll show you, let me see, I think you can probably see all of that from where you are. Yep. I'll bring this back to here. I have mag switches on the back here. Have a look at the video. These mag switches have now locked this down. It can't, once I've tightened this up, like so, it's not coming off. These guys here, I can use this, undo this with the Allen key supplied, and let that drop. And this one also, let that drop. Put a little bit of pressure on it, tighten it up with a knurled handle, and give it a nip. Same with this one. Now you could use a feather board as well, but these things have a five degree inclination towards the fence. I'll put this back on the magnet. So as I'm pushing stuff in, it's pushing it back there, which is holding it perfectly for me. So we're gonna create a rebate there. And what's the plan say, 19 millimeters. Well, we can if we want, but I'll make it possibly a little bit, a little bit smaller. Turn the dusty on again. And I'm going to use the gripper to hold onto it. So again, keep it safe. That's my first pass. I'm going to go another six millimeters with the table saw there, back to 18. Yep. Of course, I could have used a router table. I just want to show what you can do. Very versatile blade. I'll go one more pass. Let's say if you've got a smaller saw and you don't want to get a full on dado blade, this will get you out of trouble. Alrighty. I'm going to switch cameras. All right, we're getting there. I'm going to keep going along a little bit and have a bit more coffee. For people that can't hang around, I'll read out the names of the other people. So starting with um, the next person who entered is Air Force, and that's Ronica Evans. You've won. You've won a standard box. And Derek Lark, Army, you've also won a standard box. And have, okay, here's the one with the rising sun. It is Jay Evans, Army as well. So there's a lot of people from Army entered, as I said. The way I did it was I just, as um, Rafflecopter punched out the, the winners, I went with the first Army entrant that that, uh, that gave me. So I will get in touch with you guys during the week, or probably this afternoon, maybe tonight, when <laughs> after I've had a bit of a rest, a little nanny nap. Um, I'll get in touch with you guys and let you know uh, and also ask for address and what have you. And then I'll get that over to Peter and Peter will send us out. I may ask for the phone number as well because if he sends it by courier, they normally want a, t a phone number as well. What else have we got? 
So congratulations to all of those people. Here we go. And uh, back again from me being an idiot. Uh, congrats to all, yeah. Uh, now let me have a look down here that I haven't missed anything. Um, here is the, the main case with the rising sun on it. And the other ones are exactly the same, except for they don't have the rising sun on. So again, congratulations to everyone there. Okay, uh, back to me here. Now, the next thing I wanted to do, uh, so that's, that's basically done. It will sit, where's the track? Over here. The track will sit in there like that. And how neat is that? That looks beautiful. And then this area here is the hose confinement. And that, to me, I'll undo this one, is a little better. What do you think? This one, the hose was always falling off that side. This, I think, should be fine. Uh, the next thing, the next thing, we've got to create this slotted hole here so it can actually mount onto the apron of the bench. Now, there's two slotted holes, so I will do one at a time, and I'm going to use the domino. So I'll do the part with the domino, then I'll can the show, all right? So if you want to hang around and watch, Great. All right, so we need to put the eight millimeter cutter in. Where am I? <clears throat> now, to release the head of the domino, you push down on that. It's just the spanner. Take the, take the front off, put it to the side. Then on the side here is the locking point. So we push down on that, crack it. And remember, these are a router cutter. They're not a drill bit. And they're specifically designed for this machine. This is an eight millimeter, and that's the thickness of the slot that I'm after. Isn't it fun? I love being able to utilize what I have. Like I look at a thing, and I think, right now, I've got to do this What's the best tool that I've got for the job? And I think this one is going to be the best tool for this particular job. I'll put the, uh, the fence assembly back on, or the table assembly, whatever you want to call it. That's it. It doesn't have to be a deep plunge. I'm only going through half inch ply, 12 millimeters, so that will be fine. I've got it set to 15. Um, now, the height this way, how deep have I got to go with that? I'll get the plan again. It will tell me. <clears throat> so even if this part, like if you haven't um, worked out how to do it, uh, use a, a domino for this application, well, a lot of people used to do this with biscuit cutter, but the thing is you've got a really large arc going in. With this creates a full mortise, parallel width all the way down. And it's exactly the right size for this plan. Now, I need this to be uh, 47 millimeters down from there. Now, let's see how we can go with that. There's a scale on the back here, just here, and it will let me go to 47. So I'm going to set it to 47. So I'm raising it up, and there we go, 47 millimeters. Flip the table. Now, the center of that cutter, from here, the center of the cutter, back to the table, is now 47 millimeters. How cool is that? How am I going to hold it? I'm going to hold it in the bench with, the, with these clamps. I'll bring that camera around to here so you can watch. Around about... There, let's go to the other camera so I can see while I'm setting it up. No, that's rubbish. <laughs> Coming closer there. I think about, about there should be good. I'm gonna switch the cameras. Okay, the flat top blade, I'll show you the picture. As I say, these things, um, Timbercon I think sell them. And I was so impressed with them. 
I got Carbotech to start stocking them because people would come into the store, not that I work there much anymore, but people would come into the store and they say, Dave, I want to do box joints. I want a blade with a, with it gives me a flat top. Well, there was nothing, absolutely nothing. But look, how good is that? That's br I love it. <laughs> what can I say? So there it is. Torquetta. It's a uh, circular saw blade. Don't be concerned about what's written on the front here because they got it wrong. It's a 200, sorry, it's a 200 millimeter blade, six millimeter kerf. All right, back to this. I'm also going to put on the underside here, this stabilizing plate, which helps me a lot. So I don't, I don't rock the machine. I love it. Remember I said one time, right, right in the early days when I first started doing this kind of stuff, this, this channel, my mother came and she said, well, what are you going to make? You know, I built all this beautiful workshop and had all these lovely toys or tools. <laughs> and she said, what are you going to make? And I just said to her, I'm going to make David happy. And is this proof? <laughs> Not a grey beard, a smile. There's a smile under there. All right, now I need to put on which particular one is it? On the short one, I'm, both of them are coming in 47. Okay, so this one I'm going to put here. I'll switch cameras now. In a second. I'm going to put here. Now, this is where the cushion strip really, really does help me. It stops this rocking around. So I'll slide this in here. Um, pull it in a little bit further to about there. And that... I love it. So this is going to go onto here. I'm going to use one of those reference points. I don't know which one yet. And I'm going to do a plunge. Let's see how we go. Um, I need the other dust hose because it's very important to use a dust hose when you're doing these kind of um, mortises because you need to keep the mortise clear of rubbish Otherwise, you run the risk of uh, maybe snapping one of the cutters, and that would be no fun at all. Slip that into there. Bring this back to here. Plug that into there. Need a power lead. I don't know if that one's going to fit in there. Let's have a look. Yes, it should do. Cool. I'm going to have a look at that, and it needs to be in 10 millimeters and 35. You know what, I could make it 10 millimeters and 10 millimeters. It wouldn't worry me. Let's see how we go. And we're all turned on. Yes, we are. Let's go. I need to go in more because it's obviously it's 18. I need to go deeper than, than 15. Let's go 20. My mistake. There we go. Here we go. Can you see the light? <laughs> see that? That's the beginning of my slot. This is beautiful. Now I'm just going to slowly bring it along. And keep on creating slots and I'm going to set it to wide see just here there's a switch on the side here I can flick and now it's gone to that it's going to do a wide slot I'll move this over here and do it again work on the saw stop with the standard breaker no because Michael the, it won't work on the stand on the saw stop with the standard cartridge because it's an 8 inch blade not a 10 inch blade the dado cartridge is set up to be one inch closer to the arbor on the saw stop machines yes correct correct Greg okay now I'm going to go to I'm going to create I'm letting these out more pins and I'm going to reference off that last pin see how we go Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna go to the second pin now. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is so much fun. Here we go, I got it going really slowly. Look at that. How good is that? Now I'm gonna come through from this side, doing the same kind of thing. Going from, release those pins from this one first. And free hand in the middle. I'll do a measurement. If I can find my tape, I'll do a measurement. David, 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 where are you putting all this stuff? Ah, oh dear, give me a sec. Find a tape measure. The ruler will do. What do we got here? Uh, 35 from one end. That's good enough. That'll do me. Not bad for a slotted hole, eight millimeters. And what has to work with that is one of these T-bolts, because that's how we secure it to the T-track down here. So I can slide that in, look at that. <laughs> look, I'm gonna, this is how it works. Slide that back out for the moment. Put that in there. Um, I'm not sure which way around it's got to go, but look, that'll do. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The other one is going to be hooked onto there. And then this piece here will go onto there. Oop, other way around. Yep, maybe I've cut them wrong. But anyway, look, I think I did. <laughs> Not to worry, I put the dado in the wrong one. Not to worry, I'll keep that and I'll put a dado in this one as, as well. Uh, down here, and that'll be done. Look, I think that might do us for today. Switch around to the other camera, which is there. I've gone over time again. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I think I think that's all I had to do on the show. Please throw up some comment if I have missed something. Uh, looks like the Domino has some features the small one does not. It's a bigger machine. It's designed to have bigger capacity, but at the same time, the smaller machine being lighter is a lot easier, and for some people, will be fine. This takes uh, the smaller machine takes an eight and a ten millimeter cutter, but it doesn't have the same depth of plunge. I think you'd probably be able to use it in just the same manner. I'm pretty sure you would be able to. I'm reading down the side here. Um, intro scrolling text, contracts, we are, uh, image of the case, we've done. Okay, I think, <laughs> I think that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, remember, uh, Click in the description box. There's heaps of links there and uh, the entry to the Jessam clear cut stock guides. You saw those in use. They are absolutely brilliant. I love them in comparison to using a featherboard. Uh, they pull the timber in against the fence. So instead of having a featherboard against the side and down, I've only got the stock guides and they're designed, as I say, for router tables. I also have the ones for the table saw and Jessam may in the future supply a pair of those as well. That would be fantastic. Okay, let me have a quick read down here. Lovely morning, great show. Uh, Ad for Sydney Wood Show, yes, why not? John and I, John Lafferty and I will be at the Sydney Timber Artisans and whatever the rest of it is, tim uh, woodworking uh, show 
at Rose Hill Racecourse. I nearly said golf course. And that will be at the end of June. So if you're in Sydney or New South Wales and you want to drop in and see what I'm doing with this bench, I will be there under my own name, not working for Carver Tech. I'll be there promoting my bench and we'll be doing some show specials as well. So it could be well worth your while. We'll be selling the plans on special, the benches on special. We'll be doing accessory packs for the benches. If you want to make your own bench uh, and buy all the rest of the stuff as a kit and the plans, that's also an option for you as well. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, interesting to see all the different methods one can use on a job. Indeed, Michael. Thanks, Dave. Great show as usual. Thanks, David. Uh, July 7 to 9. <laughs> thanks, John. Um, Rick, thanks, Dave, for the answer to my question. Great show. Thank you, Rick, for watching. And um, look after yourselves, as I say every week. And I need to get down to here, there, and there, and there. Have a great week. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week. Bye. Bye.